Welcome to the Fantasy Football Hot Stove with your hosts, Scott Simpson and Jamie Calandro. My man, Jamie Calandro, Scott Simpson here. Welcome. Welcome back, everybody. We took a little break, had to get together uh, with just my family, with my uh, my mentals, take a little teacher break. So good to see you again, Jamie. How are you doing, sir? Yeah, you as well. I'm glad we're getting back at it. It was a nice, you know, we had a break there, got to work on some, uh, some articles and um, our draft guide, which is now fully operational on fantasyteamadvice.com so it was a good it was a good productive two weeks but i'm happy to get back at it at you especially since we're going to be talking some scott Vishbowl today and um you know i think we both finished up our drafts today so a lot of stuff to talk about and thank you oh Oh, yeah well and welcome brad we we do love everybody who uh has tuned tuned in who's downloaded who's listened to the shows we've had great guests on uh but this is it's going to be Jamie and myself, which I'm really excited about because really the heart of the show uh, is us talking about fantasy football. Uh, and yeah, we have great guests, but uh, you know, it's two teachers who love fantasy football so much that we're grinding our daily bread out of it uh, during the summer. I have to ask you, how is your summer going? Are you summer schooling? Are you free from teaching? What does your schedule look like? It has been other than, you know, kids and family because my wife went back to work uh, in person after being remote the entire year. So uh, it's been me and the kids by day and and fantasy sports by day and night, which is fine by me. I I was going to say how much of that uh, day turns into a little fantasy prep, a little, hey, hold on. I I just made lunch. Take a break. I'm going to do a little fantasy work real quick because that's what I find myself getting caught up in every day is just finding out what's happening. Uh, I took a break from Twitter. I did for for a week. I took it off because it was kind of too much for me. And so hopefully there's a balance for you with the family and, you know, your wife is pleased um, and happy when she comes home. Like that's the most important thing is when the oh, wife, yeah. you know, it leaves you with the, with the children, you know, comes home and you're happy. The order is restored to the family. And that's what matters most. And all, all guys know that who have families. So. Oh yeah. You know, you know, the Adam, the, the Adam, the the adage, the happy wife, happy life thing. So <laughs> that's important and yeah, and yeah. it's nice well no, I, I was gonna yeah go ahead no i was gonna say uh you know if, if your wife is happy then you're gonna be happy because there's not gonna be that friction that comes from you know what we're, my wife honestly she came home today i took a nap she was unhappy you know, and so that doesn't set yourself up for good fantasy football. I found when you know, happy life, happy wife, fantasy, fantasy football kind of goes into hand in hand because you're doing a lot of you're like me uh, grinding all the time. You're doing a lot for football, doing a lot for fantasy, doing a lot for for DFS. And it's just better uh, when your wife is happy. That's true. That's true. And uh, and, I, you know, <laughs> I always get uh, if I immerse myself in there once I uh bring home some <laughs> some some nice amount from a gpp it's all like ah, oh, you know now it's okay it's you know i'm glad you're doing what you're doing <laughs> I, I like that that's good validation <laughs> uh and uh you know, speaking of something that there's no money involved in but there's you know, hopefully some validation is a uh, scott fish we have one of your your uh, division mates uh in the chat you know shout out andrew he, he he loves your shirt here let's talk about scott fish let's talk about your shirt first of all though because that is fire uh, you're repping your division. Is that your division too? Yep. I'm, I'm the one Oh five in the public enemy division. This, uh, this came today. So shout out to Viridian global for all the, all the cool stuff they put out. I have a couple of others that I bought before this, but, uh, you know, I was, I ordered this one kind of late and I'm, gl- I'm glad it came. We postponed our show till, till today and it didn't come till today. So it was like, it was meant to be, but yeah, I'm repping, I'm repping the public enemy division for the Scott fish bowl right here. <laughs> That's off. I'm I'm Red Floyd uh, division. I'm number six. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna talk about our teams. We're gonna do a little breakdown. We're gonna infuse the hot seat, the 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 hot box batch hot seat into kind of looking at Scott Fish, looking at our teams, and, and talking about what we think 
uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly. So there'll be encouragements as we go along. There'll also be kind of just what were you thinking or how did that line up? And I've got a few of those just for myself, you know, not even being critical of Jamie's team because I'm sure his team way better than my team. Let's just be honest. I'm, I'm not going to be, yeah, I'm not going to be, you know, hollowed halsing myself here. All right. So let's do a little share. I can do a screen share. Uh, put on the producer hat for a second. Share my screen. And Jamie's team is ready to go. Oh, I love it. There we go. So, Jamie, walk us through. You were the fifth pick. There was the third round reversal. It's going to kind of show in that third round. You're not getting the, the, the th you know, 305. You're the 308. But kind of walk us through what you did and, and how you got to where you are right now. Yeah. So, so I mean, first of all, a, a, a shout out to if any one of them are listening or in the chat here, the, the 105 chat was fantastic from the start. I mean, I think, you know, there's so many good things about the Scott Fishbowl, but I really think that these chats with the division, not only the division chat, but the, uh, the draft spot chat, you know, they're, they're so great. I mean, we, we've been sharing strategies throughout this entire thing and uh, you know, we're rooting for each other. We're pulling for each other. We got people from all fans and analysts and celebrities. Tom Everett Scott is in our, is in our one Oh five chat and he's awesome. Um, so, you know, we, we just talk nonstop and share our, our stuff as we go and ask each other for advice. So my, whole thing going in was i mean i i chose the 105 as my top preference uh because i wanted my first pick to be one of who i have as five tier one quarterbacks um you know and, and we had a lot of discussion on that beforehand like you're gonna take a quarterback there you're gonna take travis kelsey there uh what's gonna happen um and and i was pretty bound to that you know as long as i was fine taking whoever was left of five quarterbacks and if there was more than one left i had my ranking set and josh allen who's my qb2 fell to me which i was happy about there um i was fully expecting to get kyler or dak and i would have been fine with that uh but you know i was happy josh allen fell to me second round um my strategy there was best player available of quarter qb2 uh running back or tight end whoever was going to fall to me there and i was pretty happy with um the flexibility to make that choice just because wide receiver I think is so deep and this scoring system favors those positions for me a little bit more than the wide receiver. So um, Chubb was approaching, but I got sniped one pick before in second round. I would have liked that, but I was happy with Brady and that allowed me to get my, my guy Joe Mixon in the third who I'm all in on. So I'm, <laughs> I'm either going to live in a lot of leagues or I'm going to die in a lot of leagues uh, based on him. Cause he's my guy there. So, I mean, that's, you know, I'll let you kind of take so the reins I, here if you want to know anything, but that's kind of my, you know, I, I always like to mock the first three and kind of have a plan for those first three, first, first three, because the, the top of the draft is so important to me. Um, but I was happy with the way uh, <laughs> that was Chubb. Yeah, you did shake Chubb, Andrew. Um, yeah, I got sniped a few it. times. <laughs> the guys on either side of me were <laughs> awful at some points in this draft at six and seven and three and four at least three or four times took the guy I was, I was going to have there. Um, the biggest one was uh, uh, Vlad Sedler uh, at Roto gut is in our, is in our division here and he's the one Oh three. And I pushed Galladay as long as I could, because there were so many receivers left and a wide receiver run went and it was the seventh. I think it was the eighth round. Um, I really wanted Galladay. I'm happy with Sutton, but I really wanted Galladay in that eighth round. I thought he was going to be massive value there. That would have been a huge get. What's so interesting about every Scott Fishbowl, and this is what I did. I played around here on uh, Josh ADHD's tool. By the way, one of the best tools ever. I love it every oh, yeah. uh, Fishbowl. You know, uh, shout out the work over there at Roto Grinders that they all do. Uh, and, uh, you know, love the, the content they put out. And this is just one of the amazing tools that just really ties everybody in. I can look at your draft. I actually did spy on you. At one point, you made a pick. And then I said, hey, great pick. And I, I sent you a DM or I tweeted out or something. You're like, what are you looking at my draft? And I was like, <laughs> like yeah, I am looking at your draft. So uh, I, I like what you've done here. I got the, the 106. I was hoping that Josh Allen would fall to me. He did not. Dak fell to me. Grab Dak up, you know, like you said, in that tier. But I love Josh Allen. I think he showed last year with his rushing, with his rocket-like arm, and with those wide receivers, that he can be the QB1 again. And then in this format, you know, where you're, you know, penalized heavily for, for interceptions, 
in completions. His passing percentage last year, plus 70, that's going to be massive, just keeping you in the positive every single week, no matter what, as a QB1. I love that. Uh, and then Brady, great QB2. I'm not, I'm a mix and die guy. I'm not a do or die guy. Now, here's the thing about mixing RB13. I actually think that's a great value. So I'm a do or die guy with Mixon. If you're trying to get Mixon RB10, or I'm not, no, I don't think that's a great value. I think there's other guys, but RB13, I'm accepting that. No criticism there. Uh, and so you got me in the first three. You're, you're, you haven't lost Scott Fishbowl for me yet. You're in the mix. So continue. Give me give me your four through eight. You got you hit on Sutton, so maybe the, those mid-range guys. Yeah, it's funny. I'm, you know, Scott, I don't know how, how many of the, the mocks you were doing that um, – that were set up before this whole thing. I, I did a bunch um, and, you know, not just, the, I did a few live mocks. I also did that simulated mock that was going on there that was supposedly like learned as you go, which was really pretty cool. Um, <clears throat> but, you know, I was getting, it's funny. I was getting Mixon and Gibson in round three and round four, a ton in those things. And I wasn't expecting it to happen because the live drafts just never go the way of the mocks. But, but I mean, it did, you no. know, and, and I'm, thrilled with that in this in this setting um the fi the the fifth round <laughs> the fifth round is kind of where i remember it went awry for me a little bit i'm super happy with terry mclaurin but i do feel that i could have waited more on receivers there um alan robinson and david and david montgomery were i remember this well too and andrew i think you might have been a part of this one as well and i know that might have been coming from the other direction you can correct me if i'm wrong but um two picks before I took McLaurin there. I remember I had Allen Robinson and David Montgomery both queued up there. Um, and I was just going to be happy if one fell to me there in that situation. Cause I like to load up on running backs in this. Yeah, you did a hey, Rob. I knew that was you. Yeah. So, <laughs> so he took, he took Allen Robinson and then Montgomery went right after that. So um, the two that I really wanted, I, I lost out on there. Um, who needs, I, by the way, who needs friends when you have enemies like Andrew? <laughs> yeah, I, know. I, mean, I didn't realize, too. Like, I knew I got sniped no. a bunch of times. I didn't realize it was all <laughs> apparently from that side coming yeah. back through the draft. Um, you hear. You learn a lot from these chats. <laughs> um, I mean, I'm happy with McLaurin. I love him. I've, I'm I've touting him. I'm, I think I'm above the industry on him, so I'm fine yeah. having him there. It's um, great. I love that at, our, at wide receiver 12. That's a great value. Yep, and and I'm not worried about the correlation with Gibson there. I think they correlate pretty well, um, to just based on game script and on the target share that I think is coming McLaurin's way. So I'm not worried about um, one of them eating into the others, um, you know. And then it, it kind of went along. I told I mentioned Galladay in the eighth. I'm happy with Goddard in the seventh as long as Ertz gets traded. I'm still expecting that to happen. Um, if it doesn't, I might have screwed up <laughs> tight end a little bit there in the, in this format because I don't care for the depth I have behind it. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I'm kind of hoping that he's the one that has that top five. I got him at TE7. I'm hoping he has that top five TE upside there um, if he's the only one in, in Philadelphia. So that needs to <laughs> that needs to happen for me to do, uh, for me to really, I think, unlock Goddard's true value. Well, you know, I'm not going to throw shade at Goddard. In this a tight end premium format. I do think Goddard is going to be valuable because he's going to be getting first downs. You're not going to be throwing a Goddard on start outs. So you're going to be getting him in the middle of the field behind the linebackers in space, you know, getting him those 11, 12, 13 yards that he averages. So I, I don't think that's a bad play right there at all. Um, I love Damian Harris at, at RB30. That's a great pick. Uh, Antonio Brown falling that far. I love that as well. Uh, and then Mike Williams. I mean, I, you're, you have a really solid first half of your draft uh i'm gonna pause here because this is the magic of of being able to manipulate on the internet <laughs> i'm gonna pull up my team so we can kind of just yeah, let's do it I, I liked your first half uh no, no no shade you know i no mistakes i saw you know there are people you did want to get and i understand that me too that i want to get and they kind of get sniped in front of you i think i have a little bit of that uh story as well uh so he, here here's where i'm i'm at uh i i also uh went with the dual quarterback to start. I thought that was a really good idea. Uh, I think in this format, if you, it, I, I watch people, uh, I have Aaron Rodgers, and uh, this is the thing for me. If he plays, I'm awesome. If he doesn't play, 
my season's over. Who cares, right? So it's a, well, it's a make or break. Jordan right Love, though. I, I, I do like that you took Jordan Love later. I, I think that was Love, a good right. thing to do. It's, I mean, it's still going to be a gamble, but, I mean, let's say that Aaron Rodgers does not play. I still have Jordan Love. And then also, if he does play uh, somewhere else, I have Jordan Love, too. So whatever. We'll see. Uh, Heineke's still available on the bench. I could drop somebody and, and pick some you know, pick him up. But uh, I, I wanted to get Aaron Rodgers and stack him with Devontae Adams. He went a pick before. So I did have Aaron Jones. They're not really trying to stack. Um, but I did the same thing you did. I went uh, running back uh, after my two quarterbacks, uh, and then uh, I went with Michael Thomas and Chris Carson to round up my top five. So, what, what where do you think? You know, tear me up. We're going to talk Aaron Rodgers at the end. What's what's happening? What do people think? You know, what where you're at? So maybe don't spill the whole beans on on what you think about him completely. But you know, uh, give me the pros and cons of of where you see this going awry for me. Well, nothing. I mean. The only thing I think in those first five picks that could go awry for you if Rodgers if Rogers doesn't play, because I mean, that is beautiful start, I think, to this draft. So I do have a question for you though. I mean, I you know, I was watching your your draft on this this app as we went along too, but I, I didn't look at your draft board at all uh, yeah. throughout this process. So I'm just looking because of my in my own draft in that second round at two oh eight, Rogers was there and I chose Brady. Mm -hmm. Um, I chose the certainty of Brady over him. So, I mean, if you can remember, I'm just curious what quarterbacks were there when you took Rogers too. you know, Um, I'm going to see if my fantasy league actually remembers it. I don't think it's doing it. Like if it could, uh, pulled up recently, but I don't think it's going to do that. But, uh, I, I think Tom Brady was taken already. Mm -hmm. Um, and and so for me, I would definitely think of taking Tom Brady there. Russell Wilson was gone. Kyler Murray was gone. Uh, Dak, of course, I got Dak. So uh, there's three other quarterbacks taken after this. Uh, and I think that Russell Wilson was one, Justin Herbert, Tom Brady, and then I came back with Aaron Rodgers. So uh, I think that Tom Brady is more stable than Aaron Rodgers. And Aaron Rodgers was falling in all formats because – uh, and he probably could have fallen in this one too if I didn't s- scoop him up. But uh, he's falling in all four matches because of the uncertainty. That's, that's, that's the only thing that drives it. He is a top five quarterback. He's in that that tier with his touchdowns. You know, he doesn't scramble. He doesn't get a lot of yards like the hybrids do. But yep. he does get the ball up and down. And he's got Devontae Adams. And that's what I was kind of trying to do. I was trying to like shoot for the moon and stack Aaron Rodgers with Devontae Adams. One pick away, got sniped. So that's where my my first five kind of went. A little disappointed. Um, after that though. Uh, I, I wanted to stack a uh, wide receiver from the Cowboys with Dak Prescott. Uh, CD Lamb was gone two picks before. Couldn't do CD. Went with Amari Cooper, though. I thought that was good value because uh, wide receiver 16 is that right in that range of outcomes for him. I want to have a stack attack. Uh, and then I went with Cooper Cup, wide receiver 24. And then I doubled up with the Rams, Higby. Uh, there, Judy, Janu, and Naheem. Uh, if there's any criticism there for me, uh, you know, Higby at my tight end one. I'm a little, you know, I want something a little bit better than that, but uh, we'll see how that goes. Uh, tell me what you like. Tell me what you don't like in that second half of the first round for me. Well, I love Amari. I mean, I'm, I'm on him over CD lamb um, in, in redraft, you know, dynasty, you can make a case the other way. Obviously, obviously, I mean, I think there's, there's no case to be made. I think CD lamb is definitely the pick in, in the dynasty formats um, with Cooper's future, a little bit more uncertain in Dallas, but I mean, I'm, I'm on Cooper. I, I would have been fine if seeing his name around before that on your team. So I think you got really good value out of him, especially at wide receiver 16. That guy is a top 12 wide receiver. If he stays on the field, he also has a false narrative around him that he doesn't stay healthy. He absolutely stays healthy. He's played. um, I don't have the numbers in front of me right now. I should have prepared that, but um, I'm pretty sure he's played. 14 games or more in the last four years it might be 13, but he is not someone that is constantly injured. You know, he's, he might be always banged up. He might come with a questionable tag, but he is someone that is on the field. Yeah. Um, he, every gets game. he gets targets. Like that's, yeah. he's going to get double digit targets half the season. And if he gets a touchdown, my guess is Dak's getting a touchdown. And so I'm chasing, I'm chasing those points. Yeah. Uh, and it just, I think that's something I've, I've learned from DFS is you're playing week to week. And so really what I'm hoping for is I get into the playoffs and in those playoffs, I got Dak and he has a strong game and so does Amari Cooper. That's how I'm going to win that week. 
you know, and, and maybe they don't have a, a strong week six or 10 or 12 or f- who cares if it's in the playoffs, I get there, then that's going to be a value that week. So, you know, that's kind of what you're looking for, for me, at least in that. Um, what, what do you, what do you say? Kind of like, uh, not a fan of that, that pick in the latter half. I just lost the page there. Um, no, nothing really. Um, I, I think, I, I mean, I don't know what tight ends I see Higby is at TE 10 there. I'm not, I mean, I'm fine with him. Not great. It's not, it's not. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm not, you know, I mean, I'm not in love with him. I don't know if you ask, you know, if, I don't know if you can tell me, remember what tight ends were available there. Um, you know, yeah. I do think I do think you had to take your tight end at some point around that. I love the Janu pick backing him up. I think he's a better pick, honestly, than Higby. Um, Thank you. Higby was going sooner, so sometimes what, what, my my I don't know how your division was. My division was very close to the best with ADP, so I would use this tool, kind of come check in the ADP of each of the player position groups, and and by gosh darn it, my team, uh, my 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 whole division was just like right in step with every pick. I was like, you couldn't couldn't kind of get anybody too soon or or you know or you could but you couldn't wait for anybody no one dropped ever ever no one dropped and so um that was the thing about tight ends it went on a run right after i got higby uh i got johnny a couple rounds later but uh it, like three other two other one, ones went right after that and so you know people we didn't have the long runs on how your division went we had these little mini runs and uh being in the middle i liked it because i could kind of jump around the runs our division was incredibly sharp um, with that stuff, like I was seeing, you know, in the 105 chat, everybody's sharing their thing, their their lineups, and I'm envious of some of these players. Some were getting in the 10th, 11th rounds that were going in this eighth in ours. You know, um, like <laughs> we had to make our own <laughs> our own values in this thing. There was none of those like easy picks that is like, all right, you know, this just came to me. I just won the league with this pick. Nobody, nobody gave anybody any leeway in our division at all. So, I mean, I like that too. I, you know, I like drafting with 11 other sharp people. Right. Um, definitely right. the case. Right. Uh, and a couple of people maybe aren't as sharp in, in every division as, as everybody else is. People are on different players, but it's still, it, it's, it's tricky. There's no home league uh, shenanigans here, you know, <laughs> <laughs> or you just have someone reaching. I think Tua was the biggest reach that somebody went a little earlier, you know, about five QBs too, or, you know, too early of the ADP for Tua, but, Hey, if that's your guy, you're reaching. I, I'm not going to criticize you. You know, you put the research in, and you've said this is the person I'm going to get. And I'm on the on the corner. This person's on the corner. Then they're not going to get another chance at him for 23 picks. So get your guy if two is your guy. So, but he's not my guy. So, uh, but okay. Well, back to your team now. Let's let's just kind of recap. Solid QBs. I mean, just you're going to be in every game. I love this. You're not going to take a lot of negatives at all. Uh, you got a solid core group of running backs, PPR upside with all three of your top ones, and Damian Harris, RB1 upside for the uh, majority of the season. I think he can just carry the load for them, and you know they want to play ugly. They always do. Uh, and then Antonio Brown, Mike Williams, big play upside. I love it. So jump over. You're, you're now Jameis Winston uh, as your QB3. I don't have a QB3 uh, as high as Jameis Winston. I kind of wanted to get him, didn't get him. It was kind of a story. Uh, talk about your second half here. Um, yeah, the, the second half, the second half was where the the real like sniping of my late guys began, um, mm. where I really had to kind of zig or zag, if, if you will. Um, the quarterback situation first. I mean, I I don't go into super flex leagues or two quarterback leagues without without a QB three. So I'm not thrilled with who I have there. Um, so the way I draft, you can see I took Winston and Locke. Um, basically my, my thought process behind that whole thing is that one of, hopefully at least one of them is the starter for his team and that whoever that is, I'll only need to use on the bye week of a fully healthy Allen and Brady throughout the entire season. Um, you know, there's a nice, there's a nice argument, um, especially in this, in this format that you don't need to use a quarter, <laughs> quarterback, I mean, it stinks, um, that you don't need to use a quarterback as the super flex, which is definitely viable. I generally tend to use a quarterback as the super flex, um, just because his 
floor of actually scoring points is so much higher. Um, right. The egregious penalties for quarterbacks in this definitely balances that out a little bit more, which brings me to why I'm not super happy with who I have in Winston or Locke because they're both interception machines. Yes, they are. Um, so I could get negatives from them. Um, but I do want to have a, a reliable backup um, just in case, you know, I'm hit by the injury thing. So that was kind of the explanation behind them. And they were really all that was any viable option that was left. Um, I chose Winston over Cam, that I remember. That's um, Cam Cam is a, a worm burner now, you know? Yeah, yeah. I, so, I don't expect him to hold the position. Um, and if Winston is the Saints quarterback, I do expect him to hold the position. Yeah. Um, so that was a pretty easy choice. Um, the biggest sniping for me in, in this one was um, I really, really wanted Blake Jarwin. Um, I saw him on your team, and I'll, mm. I'll, uh, you know, I'll, I'll praise him when we go back to your team. But if you look at my Hooper pick in at fourteen oh five, Jarwin went one pick before that, and that was the that one killed me. Um, I'm not worried about Dalton Schultz. I think Jarwin is going to eat with that Dallas offense. Um, you know, the, the knock is, well, is Schultz going to be involved? How are you going to sustain all three of those Dallas receivers? Um, what you need to remember is that Dalton Schultz was the TE 14 last year. And that was with garbage backup quarterbacks for the Andy entire Dalton. season. Some yep. other guy. It, Dalton and, uh, Danuch, new, the new, the new, yeah, you're the um, you know, <laughs> Dalton Schultz still sustained TE 14 high end tight end two in, in a loaded offense with a, with a workhorse running back and three solid receivers. Now that Dak is back, um, I expect, I expect Jarwin to be a top 12 tight end this year. And I was about to draft him as what looks like TE 23. Um, and I, I took Hooper one after that just because I needed another tight end. So I hate that pick. I wanted Jarwin. That was the biggest sniping for me. That that does just hurt so bad when you locked in on a guy, late value, going to get him, and then one pick before. Uh, it just it, it cuts you right to the heart of your fantasy. You know, you're just like, you son of a bitch. <laughs> yep. I'm not going to say who did it, but it, 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 listen, if Andrew did it, you know, I mean, we can go back and look at the numbers if he's the guy who always gets you. Um, it was not Andrew. It, Andrew was two, actually two picks um, before okay. me. I think he was the 107. So coming back, he was uh, he was okay. two picks. I'm scrolling through my draft right now because um, I'll call him out. No, yeah, it's it's uh, <laughs> Justin underscore R Edwards who was for four for four. Who I, I like also a thorn in my side through this through this draft here. <laughs> He's a good drafter, and he mm -hmm. took a few of my guys before moving. None hurt like that one. Yeah, that makes sense. My, the thorn on my side, of course, was uh, one of the best fans around, and that's Pete Davidson over there at Rotobon on Twitter. Uh, mm -hmm. He he was you know one oh six oh five, and and uh, he was in your spot. He might even have been in your chat. That that guy is just sharp as a tack. So he took a bunch of my guys. It just you know didn't get to me, and uh, whatever you know, I'm gonna take a bunch of his guys. Yeah, you get him back definitely. Uh, not just run one tight end that's all the time. Uh, you know, Arthur Smith coming over, uh, the Titans they like to run two tight ends, so not surprised that Hayden Hurst is uh is there. I like that. Uh, and then I got Ty Johnson too. I might have been in the same round, and I got Demarcus Robinson. Uh, so uh, I do like your team a a on the back end because it's a lot like my team and uh. You know, this is a, a typical thing here that you have to do. You have to deal with. Let's see who it brings you back to. It always brings you back to like a weird person on the screen when you go to log back in. Okay, so this is the main screen. You don't want to be on the screen. If you're on this screen, it means you're you have no freaking chance to win. Sorry, guys. It's that's just like <laughs> that's just the code for what it means. Like you're such an outlier that you you are not worthy of winning. You're just worthy of being like a like a meme. You know what I mean? So, okay, let's go to my team. Yeah, look, the people's pen is up here. I don't know. Why is that person up here? I don't know that person. Okay, right, let's go time. to my team. I don't know the ins and outs of it. <laughs> yeah, it always likes Tim Turner for me for some reason. Okay, so here's my team on the back, and I'll, I'll kind of give you my position groups by you know as we go down. Uh, I got 
Elijah Moore, Rondale Moore, Terrence Marshall, Demarcus Robinson, Josh Palmer. You'll see that is four rookies. Mm-hmm. Two of those, two of those will hit, and I'll be happy. So rookies hit. So grab some rookies at the end of your draft. That's what I did. Uh, and then I've got Jamal Williams, Rashad Penny, uh, D'Artagnan. I'm just going to call him Evans, uh, Ty Johnson, uh, and then Jordan Love to back up Aaron Rodgers if anything happens. And then your guy, Blake Jarwin. So, uh, you know, I, I'm pleased uh, in, in the later rounds. I definitely was getting sniped by people. Uh, the Evans pick, uh, I'm not happy with that myself. I was not realizing Brian Hill was alive at all. I was kind of just thinking more about Evans being there. But, you know, whatever. I don't care. I, I feel like I finished strong. I like Ty Johnson. I like Demarcus Robinson as well. So, uh, overall, I like my, my, my back half of my draft. It, it didn't win me, Scott Fish, but it didn't lose me either, I don't think. And uh, Elijah Moore, I think, is my favorite pick here. We'll talk about him later in best ball, which is what we're going to do next. But uh, so, yeah, break me down. What do you what do you like? And then what are you kind of not not favoring here? Yep, I like the way you did the rookies. You know, I mean, that's this is like I don't think you can just pick one and say this rookie is my guy. This is the one that's going to hit. If you want to be going that route for the upside young guy later on, you got to take a few. Um so I like that way you did that. Uh, Marshall is my favorite. We talked about him on our last pod with with Jordan, Jordan mm-hmm. Vanek, uh, who is you know our our resident Carolina expert. Um, I, I love how much you know Darnold prefers the slot. Um, I think he is going to be of those four rookies that we're talking about there. He's going to be the quickest one to return some value for you. Um, um, Rondale Moore is. I don't know. I'm still, I'm still torn on him about how he's going to fit in with that whole thing. But I, but I like the more and the Marshall picks the most there for you and Darrington Evans. I mean, you know, you, you took a little time off Twitter. I don't know. He's, he's like the people's running back. Now Have you been following that guy at all. No, no, I, I, I have been kind of just, uh, my, one of my new things I do on Twitter is I jump on, I throw out my content. I like a bunch of other people's content, throw their content out there, go, yeah, your content's awesome. I appreciate your content. And then I jump yeah. back in and like do family stuff. Like, you know, yeah. but I do, I, I have, that's kind of why I think I drafted him. I think he was just in my, my milieu enough to, for me to be like, Oh, that guy, you know? So what, what is happening with him? What's going on with him? Yeah. Well, like you see bow type there that um, I forget what the, fo- there's one football player. I forget which one it was. It was like, fashion on uh you know content creators like us you know kind of like the ones that are grinding it out there and and evans like came out and defended everybody and you know he's talking about how important the the content creators that have 500 followers devin bush that was it right devin bush was like bashing bashing um all these little content creators and and evan just rushed to you know our defense and saying that like you know we they owe us a lot for all the stuff we put together and He's been nonstop just defending, uh, d- defending content creators of fantasy football. Um, he put that he was going to follow us all. It'll take him some time, but like he's following me now on Twitter. Um, and, and he's interacting, and it's always positive, positive, positive stuff. Uh, so, so well, <laughs> you know, yeah, well, you the know fantasy what? community loves Darrington Evans now. So you should be happy to have him. <laughs> I mean- a great pick okay you know here's what we should do if he's if he's so you know positive which i'm all about positive by the way i think it's one thing i during my little hiatus i just wanted to make sure i retain my positivity uh completely because that's what i'm here for is just to love everybody uh we should reach out and uh love to have him on the show yeah uh you know yeah. if you ever to come on he could be somebody maybe we try to get it uh on the show in the off season next Here's the, I, we want to hear from football players. We talk about our perspective. To hear from them and their perspective on not like their outlook and what they're going to do fancy wise, but their experiences as football players. That's a real special thing to have. And so for them to have a platform to tell their stories, I think, you know, Deterian Evans feels that connection with people just understanding like we're in this together. Like we all need each other. Uh, it'd be great to work with him and just to kind of hear his story. Cause I, yeah, I didn't know about him. I just know that he's the backup. You know uh, I thought he was the backup uh, for Derrick Henry, but you know, Bo kicked me in the nuts and said, you know, unless Brian <laughs> Hill isn't on the team anymore. And I was like, Oh, I, I'm, I'm a Evans guy. So whatever. But uh, I'm excited that you have two of the same guys that I have in Ty Johnson, Demarcus Robinson. They're not long shots. I think they're guys who earned reps last year 
and we'll see how they come into the training camp, the guys to monitor. You know, maybe they're not on the team, but yeah, I, I like it overall. And uh, I'm in the Pink Floyd division, a bunch of great people in the Pink Floyd division. And uh, shout out Pete Davidson, who, who was a thorn in my side. I love that guy. <laughs> uh, praying for him and his family right now. Uh, so, you know, shout out. Uh, but let, let's transition real quick. Uh, great on both sides of the, the coin. We're going to meet in the championship, obviously. Yep. That's um, it. So l- let's talk a little bit about best ball right now. And, uh, you know, you can find me on the underdog streets for best ball. I- I'm an underdog guy. Uh, promo code nimble. I'm not going to lie. Uh, it- it's for, you know, uh, m- I- I'm getting fed. I'm getting the bread. Uh, so far, I've been able to raise some money. We're doing a, a promo right now. Uh, on underdog where if you deposit any amount of money 10 bucks 15 bucks 20 bucks 100 bucks a million bucks you know whatever uh but if you you make a deposit you're getting a free 25 bucks so you put in 10 bucks you know you're getting a free 25 bucks and you can use it to play in the uh, best ball mania 2 tournament which is the biggest fantasy football uh, best ball t- t- tournament like ever uh it has uh, a championship prize of one million one dollars which is a lot of money uh, you could win that this year i'm in it i've got like six or seven shots in it boom 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 uh and so you enter now you know, jump in, deposit, you get a, a free shot at a million bucks. Put your best team together in a draft format. It's great. You got 18 players. You draft a quarterback, you know, running backs, wide receivers, tight end, puts a flex, no defenses, uh, no kickers, which is great. Uh, uh, unless you're Denny Carter, then you're crying because you love kickers. Wah, wah, wah. But that's fine. You know, there's kickers in Scott Fish, by the way. And I, I noticed you didn't have any kickers. I'm kicker free too. Yeah. God bless you. You're, yeah. you're not taking. Listen, you, here's the thing about it. You can pick up a kicker. You can pick up a kicker if you want one because there will be some on the waiver wire anytime, which is great if you're needing uh, somebody to jump into your team. That kind of like makes it so that you can go for position players that are that are more of a shot, like a long shot or somebody to, to, to get reps that maybe people aren't suspecting. So kickers will be around. That's my thought. Don't need to get any of them if I need them right now. You're, you're that, struggling. You know. That was my thought as well. And, and it, was, it was very interesting. And kudos to Scott fish for adding that little wrinkle in there too um, yeah. i do like it as part of it and and um you know I, I, you you follow linda you know she's love linda yes you know, and she's a she's a 105 also so she's in our chat so i mean she's been feeding us and feeding us kicker data <laughs> um throughout this entire thing and and honestly really good stuff too um to the point where i i really c- did consider it um, I mean, my biggest thing, and this can transition us because we're going to talk about best ball. <sighs> yes, you can predict kickers. You can predict who the ones are going to be at the, you know, like the Chiefs kicker and the Falcons kicker and the Ravens kicker. You can predict that they are going to be near the top of the kicker list. But I just don't see tangible ways where you can predict that Justin Tucker will be a better flex in week six than he'll be in week three. If this was a best ball format, I'd be all over them um, because they can definitely outscore a lot of the flexes, but it's not. And I'm just not playing that game where I'm going to try and figure out that, you know, um, Justin Tucker is going to outscore Austin Hooper as one of my better flexes this week. It's just not the way I'm going to play this game this year. Um, I don't think there's any benefit to it for me. Um, and like you said, if I need a kicker, I'll pick a kicker off the waiver wire, and I hope that he runs into four field goals for that week. Right. And here's the thing, too. Somebody like, you know, Koo, who was one of the, the best kickers last year, uh, they were inefficient in the red zone, the Falcons were. Well, well you know, that's why they have Arthur Smith there. He's going to change the game. They've got Mike Davis. They they have Kyle Pitts now. They're, they're going to be able to score in the red zone. So Koo – He's not going to be as valuable as he was last year. The, the season is going to look different. You know, think about Mason Crosby, great offense. They, they kicked like 17 field goals. He's not, He didn't do anything for you. You know, he really wasn't going to help you be one of the top best kickers, even though he's attached to a great offense. So, uh, you know, you, you got to kind of play it. Uh, like you said, it's, it's in a week by week kind of gamble. Uh, which is fine if you want to do that. I'm not as as much into that. Uh, well, I am, but we'll talk about that now. I'm into best ball gambling, so I wanted to be as honest as I could be. I, I'm going to lay the curtain bare here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys my percentages on my players, and I just want to talk about kind of 
Who are your guys in best ball? I'm going to show you my guys. And I like to diversify. So you're not going to see anybody I've drafted in any position over 37%. I'm at 36 is the highest. So, you know, I, I'm going to kind of reveal my, my cards. And then you don't have to show your screen or anything like this. But, you know, maybe you can talk about who are some of the people, you know, that, that Jamie's targeting in best ball. Uh, whether it be here on Underdog or if you're uh, able to use uh, DraftKings. I do some DraftKings as well. I know that Yahoo does it. Lots of different places have it. So uh, this is where I'm at right now. And so I, we can go position by position. We'll start with quarterback. Uh, I, I have uh, Matthew Stafford, Aaron Rodgers, Josh Allen, Jameis Winston, and Ryan Fitzpatrick as my top five quarterbacks drafted. Uh, Matthew Stafford at around 32%. Aaron Rodgers is on a quarter of the teams that I've drafted so far. Josh Allen almost on a quarter as well. And then Jameis Winston on about 20%. So what you're seeing kind of is uh, uh, Josh Allen is my QB1 in teams. And then I've got a Matthew Stafford, Aaron Rodgers, QB1-2 balance going. And then Jameis Winston, uh, you know, and then I have you know, Ryan Fitzpatrick in there, Justin Herbert, Tannehill, etc. So Talk to me about your quarterbacks. Where do you kind of fall in this range? Who would you have higher ranked in yours? Who's a little lower ranked in your top five? Yeah, I, th I mean, for quarterbacks, I don't play as best ball as much as you do. Um, I like the waiver wire too much, but I mean, I do do my fair <laughs> share of them because <laughs> because they're fun. You know, all fantasy football leagues are fun. And, and like you said, I, I do a bunch of the DraftKings ones. Um, right. Uh, yeah, for quarterbacks, I I'm kind of with you on everything there. Um, you know, I don't really see much disparity between redraft, um, regular redraft quarterbacks and best ball quarterbacks in this range. Um, I do think I would have the Kyler Murray and Dak Prescott above Lamar Jackson in best ball, where it's the opposite in redraft leagues. And again, but it's, you know, it's splitting hairs as to why, um, just because I think his passing touchdown floor is lower than theirs. Um, obviously the rushing he makes up for, but, um, I think they have a little bit more cohesive floor and ceiling combination than Lamar Jackson does in best ball. So I kind of dip him below them in that format, but, but otherwise I'm kind of with you, um, with what you got going on there. Great picks. And I do like Stafford. Yeah. I like, well, and, I like and you can volume. see down here at the bottom, I, I never get to kind of yeah, no, St Stafford, I also, I'm not getting him in the earlier rounds. I'm getting him in later rounds, you know, 10th yeah. round, ninth round. So it's it's hard not to to eat him up there. And same with Rodgers. They're both kind of later round. They're tier two quarterbacks. More Josh Allen is a tier one. Justin Herbert, you know, Pat Mahomes. So I, I do have tier ones if you kind of add them up. Um, but I don't have a lot of Kyler Murray. I only have 5% of Kyler Murray because he gets, he gets gobbled up pretty quick in most of these drafts. He is one of the top three or four picks uh, every time. Same with Dak. It's, it's always hard to get. Um, so, all right, th these are my guys in the running back area. Uh, I'll go over them real quick. My top five, I got Najee Harris, about 30%. Uh, Kareem Hunt, 27%. Damian Harris, who both crapped on, 20%. Jamal <laughs> Williams, 20%. Philip Lindsay, 20%. Uh, and then Alvin Kamara, 18%. So uh, th this kind of represents, you can see kind of the the – the early running back, the Najee Harris, the mid round running backs and the late round running backs. Then you got a couple more, uh, you know, early round here and, and Kamara and Derek Henry are my top 10. But what do you think about my, my top five here? Where do you differ? Uh, are, are you guy? are you a Najee Harris guy or are you fading him this year? I, I do have him a lot of my leagues. I do like him a lot this year. Um, yeah, I, he's not really somebody that I'm going to own too much this year. Um, unless his ADP falls for me a little bit. I do think that in this format, I like him a little bit more because you don't have to, you don't have to start, you know, mess. It's kind of like Jonathan Taylor from last year. You know, you don't have to um, figure out when they unleash him, if they unleash him. Um, again, you know, it's a, it's a little bit of a different situation there than Jonathan Taylor last year. Um, but Najee Harris, he's going around guys ADP wise like Antonio Gibson and Joe Mixon and um, Edwards Hilaire, kind of in that range. I like all those guys better than him, just as fantasy players. Um, I do think if I played as much best ball volume as you do, that I would own Harris more than I do in in 
in the redraft leagues, but I still have zero shares of him as we speak <laughs> right now. Even though the draft season for redraft really hasn't well, totally yeah. ramped up for me yet. It has not. It has not really kicked off completely at all. I think, you know, we, we both did Scott Fish and we don't have Harris. So, you know, both didn't get him, you know. Um, but I I think that, uh, you know, not that saying that the Sharps are ahead of the curve on this. I think you can get Harris later in your home leagues than where Sharps are getting him in, in best ball for sure. And so mm-hmm. uh, this is kind of foreshadowing for me. I really do like Najee Harris a lot. Um, the Kareem Hunt you see there second. Uh, he is just available in the seventh round. I cannot not get Kareem Hunt as a PPR back. It's half point PPR I get, but still, I, I do like Kareem Hunt a lot. RB twenty five, RB thirty range. I mean, he's just kind of a kind of cheat code there. I think he's going to outperform that ADP. So, uh, and then that what pick, do you think about that pick? I like a lot. I like the Hunt pick a lot. Um, I think, I think you know, you get again with redraft versus best ball, I think you get a much closer um, level of value between Chubb and Hunt in best ball than you do in, in redraft. Um, Like I have Hunt or excuse me, I have Chubb way higher in redraft than I do in, in best ball rankings. And I have Hunt lower in redraft than I do in best ball rankings. So I like that pick getting the ADP value on Hunt um, in these best ball formats a lot. Yeah. And so I, I, Tift, I would just say exchange with with a friend today. Uh, I, I'm down on J.K. Dobbins. I, I ranked him down. I was on uh, um, Matt Harmon's show on on the Yahoo Fantasy Football. It was awesome. Shout out Matt Harmon. He's the man. Uh, we we had Matt Harmon on our show, you know, mm-hmm. and that was kind of the beginning of my relationship with Matt Harmon. Um, and so uh, we we were kind of just talking about uh, you know J.K. Dobbins. I brought up Cream Hunt. The guy said, you know, Cream Hunt. Terrible compared to J.K. Dobbins. Well, J.K. Dobbins is is ADP is at, at uh, you know thirty five pick thirty five in, in, in PPR drafts, whereas Cream Hunt is pick seventy. So it's not that I, I don't think that J.K. Dobbins is going to outscore Cream Hunt. I think he will by like 20, 30 points more. But you know what? You can get Cream Hunt. You know, at half the price, seventy five is half of thirty five. I it just it's like my brain is all value of when you can get these guys. So. I'm not chasing Cream Hunt in the fifth round or the sixth round. Him in the seventh round, that is, I just, I can't not pass that up. That's somebody I'm going to get. Same with Damian Harris as well. But you can see with me, 28%, 29% is the highest I'm going with any running back. I like to keep fluid. I'm very much fluid. I'm not somebody. Because you need to have a lot of, if you have a lot of lineups, which I do, you got to have a lot of different players and you want to make sure you're not, you know, pigeonholed to one guy, honestly. I'm not a Dobbins so, guy either. Okay. Let's, um, let's, yeah, I, I'm not yeah. a Dobbins guy this, this year either. I, I think he's fine. Um, he's certainly good from a fantasy perspective. But, I mean, you, you just got to understand that, you know, even though the Ravens led the league in rush attempts and yards per carry, he only had 152 touches last season. Um, so, I mean, he was um, electric with the ball. But – they signed Gus Edwards, who is going to be in the mix, and I'm still maintain that their RB1 is their quarterback. So, you know, apart from an Edwards injury, yeah. which would help his volume, and God forbid a Lamar Jackson injury, which would probably make him an RB, a true RB1 there, his upside is just too capped for me for where he's going uh, in that offense. Well, yeah, and I, I, I was talking about it with, said because i was kind of i'm fading jk and i said to me it's like you know he uh ascended last year did a great job and people are like this is his value and then gus said now we're just gonna keep it that way <laughs> we're not gonna adjust we're not gonna move it down we're just gonna keep it uh kind of too high and so if you get jk dobbins in the fourth round that's a great pick snag him every time but if you're reaching for him in the beginning of the third round or something like that just gets me worried if you, you you're trying to grab him that early i just think he's going to not return value on that so um but not saying he's going to be terrible or that he's going to be you know less than kareem hunt i think he's more but i think at the value at the price you're paying you can get somebody like ceh you could get Najee here get somebody who has more ppr upside i think i think that's for me he only had what like 20 
uh, three catches or 28 catches, some, some, some small number last year. And so they're not going to target the running back a hundred times. And that's not going to happen. And, and it's just the, the, the timeshare he has is he's the third running back. Oh, he's one of three running backs. Like you said, like there's three different people running the football. So, um, but anyway, all right. So let's talk wide receiver. Uh, you'll, you'll notice here. For me, most owned players mostly are cheaper, um, and and you'll you'll kind of see a pattern here where I can get players. I'm kind of shooting my shot at them uh, later in drafts, where I think it's kind of where you can kind of go more all in on players that you like or your upside, you know, kind of shots. But uh, my main guy, which is my I think my my highest ranked guys in the whole uh, you know underdog system here, is Elijah Moore. I love Elijah Moore this year. Tell me where you're at with Elijah Moore. Uh, is he somebody you want to target? Do you know I, I got him on my Scott Fish team. Are you fading him just because the you know QB uncertainty with you know Zach Wilson rookie? Uh, what's the offense going to look like? New situation there in in, in the New York Jets. Uh, you know what, what what are you doing with him? Well, I mean it's funny because I'm looking at your list there and I'm seeing Jamison Crowder right under him. Um, I really need him to not be a Jet <laughs> for me to really like Elijah Moore this right. year. Um, I'm fine with it. I'm I'm not fading him. Um, I'm not reaching for him either. I think he's definitely got the upside that you want in this format. Um, I don't understand, you know, you mentioned too, like the quarterback concern. I don't, <laughs> you know, there's a lot of narrative out there about how much people love Trey Lance and how much they love Justin Fields um, and that he's being, they're being taken far ahead of Zach Wilson in these kind of drafts and i'm not saying that they're not the better option than zach wilson but zach wilson is the starter (laughs) in week one for the jets so you know and there's really nothing so far that says he's not going to be a good quarterback so i mean to to say that you're against the jets receivers um because of their quarterback unease but then to go out and say that you're all for the 49ers receivers and the bears receivers because of the quarterback they drafted who will eventually take over, which you don't know when that is. Right. You know, um, I think that's bad process. Um, I'm fine with all the jets receivers on this team. He's going to have a camp to work with them. He's the number two pick for a reason. I mean, Zach Wilson is not a bad football player right. by any stretch of the imagination. So, um, it's just a matter of what style they work up for him. Um, but I like Elijah more for sure, but I really do need Jamison Crowder to not be a jet. <laughs> if I'm going to, if I'm going to go as big as your, uh, you got him there. Yeah. And, and what I'm also doing here is I'm leveraging this as um, one of these players each week is going to be effective and you can get them. They're so cheap. Well, at least Elijah Moore was before, Everybody, you know, saw him with that shirt off doing pull-ups with AJ <laughs> Brown. Damn it. That's the problem is you want to hype a player up, just make a video of them with their shirt off powerlifting somewhere at a park in New York. And people are like ADP. It used to be at 13. Now it's at 11. Now it's at 10. Now it's at nine. So, you know, muscle, uh, muscle Twitter is a dangerous thing. It's a drug. <laughs> muscle Twitter is a drug. Yeah. It's terrible. So, but. Uh, James and Crowder in like the 16th, 17th, 18th rounds. Those are just rounds. I just I can't not do it. But those are kind of my, my later round shots. My main guys in the upper rounds, Terry McLaurin, he he is uh, on, on $142 of my entry fees. I do love me some, some Terry McLaurin. So backing up your Scott Fish pick there. And then Michael Thomas is on 22% of my teams. You know, M- Michael Thomas, it, you're getting him, you know, in later rounds. It just b- befuddles me. I don't understand what's happening with his value at all. So I'm glad people are not smart and they let me get Michael Thomas. Uh, and there then- is no reason to not like Michael Thomas this year. I understand Breeze is gone, but he showed he was an elite wide receiver, even with Taysom Hill as quarterback. And he won't be any less than that if Winston is the starter. I mean, he's a wide receiver one, period. And his depth of target will be way longer and deeper. Mm-hmm. And he'll be able to, to to move after the ball. He won't get tackled by somebody right away because he's slant boy. He'll be 
out boy or he'll be post boy or he'll be, you know, 20 yard dig boy or some other. How about be a man? Instead of a boy. That guy's a man. So I'm, I'm, I'm all over him. And then, like, I did the same thing I kind of did before. I've got those rookies, you know, jumping around there. You know, I've got Amon Ross St. Brown. I've got Terrence Marshall. I've got Devontae Smith. You know, and then I've got the veterans sprinkled in there. Deontay Johnson's Calvin Ridley's Chris Godwin. So uh, nothing wild about any of those picks. So I'm, I'm trying to remain kind of flex, you know, flexible and fluid. My guy, Demarcus Robinson there. These are later round picks for me. Uh, you know, Dwayne Eskridge, just later round guys you can get on the cheap. And that's why they're kind of inflated here in my ownership. I'm not jumping at them. I'm getting them, you know, 18th, 17th round. So I like the St. Brown pick um, a lot in best ball, just simply because we have no clue whatsoever who the wide receiver one in Detroit is right now. I took no. Tyro Williams in, um, in the Scott Fishbowl late, um, which I'm fine with. But when I did, it's funny that St. Brown was the first Detroit receiver to be drafted in the, in the Scott Fish in our division. Um, and I was left, I was looking at both Tyra Williams and Brashad Perriman. Neither one of them is, you know, someone who's going to have beaten down the doors to draft, but they could both conceivably be the wide receiver one on a football team when week one kicks off and I got him in the 17th round. Same with St. Saint, Saint Brown in this thing. I mean, you know, he could be, he could be Justin Jefferson for that team. I mean, why not? Right. Well, and, and I think I would argue that the wide receiver one is, is TJ. Honestly, you know what I mean? Like, uh, well, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, I mean, yeah it's kind of so. All right, here's my here's my uh, tight ends real quick. We'll wrap this up because we got to talk, uh, you know, uh, a, a segment real quick. We're gonna go fast. Uh, steals, ADP steals, and then then robberies where AD, you're just getting your hosed. You know, yeah, we had some good feedback on this too. Yeah, I like this. Here's some good ones, and we'll throw a couple of ours in there to agree, disagree. Uh, so I'm getting a lot of late OJ Howard. This is like my last pick I leave the draft with is OJ Howard. Uh, you can see I've got him in, in a lot of, uh, you know, 30% of my tournaments. After that, though, I like Kyle Pitts. I like the value on on Tunyon. Uh, he is able to be paired with with my guy Aaron Rodgers a lot. I like to double stack those guys up with a couple players. Uh, and then, you know, your usual suspects. I got Logan Thomas. I got Blake Jarwin, uh, TJ Hawkinson. So I'm not really getting a lot of Kelsey. He's just so early. You know, it's just so hard to get him so early. Uh and that's just tricky to do. So, I mean, the the, the Wallers, the Kittles are down here at the 5%. Kelsey's down at 3%. So, I, I can't get those guys. Everyone always snags them. I do have Kyle Pitts at 22%. That's kind of my shot uh, at, at, at upside. Uh, where are you fading here? And, and I'm okay if you shoot me with Kyle Pitts because that's kind of a, a heavy percentage for a rookie. No, I'm not going to. I'm not going to say to fade Kyle Pitts. Um, you know, we're, we're – I do think – there, there are points where people go way beyond <laughs> where they should with him. Um, oh, but, big time! Him, you can find him at Bo underscore big time. Oh, he's, he's the big pits, the biggest pits truther. Is yeah, he, he's he he's pushed his ADP up into the third round. He drafts <laughs> the third round. He wrote a pits like love article uh, for Rum Boys. Uh, so check that out. Uh, I will. I will. I haven't seen that. Yeah, Bowman Big Time's a big pitzer, you know, which I understand. He calls him like a once in a generational freak sent here to, you know, change the position forever. So like I I love I love what he's he's spitting. And uh part of me getting pits is, is just him hyping him too. But I like getting him in the fourth round. Uh it's I don't feel as bad doing that because tight end, you're just leveraging the position, is what you're doing. You know, you're yep. you're creating a vacuum and the next guy after Pitts is not as good as him for sure. Mark Andrews, sorry, bro. You're good. <laughs> You're um, but look, just looking at the round, I'm totally with you on the O.J. Howard pick. He is definitely a late-round target of mine in all formats. Um, I love his talent that he's really never gotten to realize with Tom Brady because of his injury. Um, and, you know, I like the Jarwin pick a lot, uh, looking at your list there as well. Not a big Tunyon fan, even if Rodgers does play. Um, I think his touchdown efficiency is unsustainable. Um, there are a lot of peripherals that worry me about him. Um, but again, you know, where his ADP is going, unless it rises too much, I'm not really I'm not really saying that people are paying too much for him because he's not being drafted as like a top six or seven tight end. He's more in that ten to twelve range, which I'm fine with there. He's just not I get him a little lower than that. Right. He's he's not a main and most of the time what I'm doing when I'm getting uh 
you know, Tunyon there is because I have Aaron Rodgers. And so I just want to get a stack. And so I'm not reaching for him, but I'm settling. Like, you mm-hmm. know, you're settling for somebody. He's definitely a, a mid tier second tight end. You're not making him your tight end one. Then then you're struggling if you're doing that. Uh, that that's for sure. So, well, yeah. I appreciate you, you diving in here and critiquing and giving me feedback. You know, this has been excellent. Uh, you know, we're, we're, we'll talk about, uh, more best ball stuff as we get closer to the, the beginning of the season. And then the cool thing the underdog's going to do that I'm going to be talking about, and maybe we can talk about on the show too. Maybe you and I can do some of this is that they have weekly leagues that are set up where you can do, uh, you know, 12 man drafts. You all draft a team each week, just like you would for the regular season. Each week you draft a new team. I play against each other. Whoever wins, you know, gets most of the pot. Uh, or you can do head to head. So you and I can go and just pick our teams. And you know, if, if I pick Kyle Pitts that week, you, you can't get him. You know, so uh, those are pretty cool ideas as well. A little bit different than what DraftKings offers. Uh, that that Underdog's going to do. So uh, if that works out, we could do that. But I would like to compete against you because Jamie, let's just be honest. You're sharp, bro. Uh, you know, really, really, really uh, cool to see you being recognized in the community. I know that you've been blowing up with all the musical stuff that you've been doing. Uh, but really, underneath that musical talent, there is just a, a analytical mind for DFS uh, and understanding how DFS works. So I can't wait to learn from you this year as we kind of do some DFS stuff. Right now, we're not in that. You know, we're not talking about that. The hot stove is talking about kind of what the season's going to be. But we'll talk more about it as, you know, when Jamie and I have to talk for sure. But I'm sure there'll be a DFS edge to the show. Wow, well, I can't wait for NFL DFS, especially yeah, with I- the way MLB is going this year, this has been – MLB is just – I'm winning right now. I'm winning pretty nicely right now, which is nice because it has not been kind <laughs> lately. It's tricky. It's a real hard thing to, to wrestle where the NFL, at least you understand the beast. You know, and that, not completely, but you, we, we've both been successful uh, riding the beast, you know. Yeah, so. yeah. Yeah. Okay. So let me uh, pull up our, our next segment. And so, you know, we, we're, we're looking for the feedback, which <clears throat> I always love feedback. Feedback is great. As an educator, you provide feedback to your students, really helps them to learn. And so we, we put a little segment out here called steel versus robbery. Who is a player whose ADP is a steal right now? Uh, who is a player whose ADP is a robbery? Best answers get tossed around on the hot stove show tonight with Jamie and myself. And then uh, if you haven't seen uh, this this movie, I, the the my the name of it is definitely slipping my mind. Jamie, do you, do you know the name of this movie? No, I don't know what this is. I was just going to ask you what it is. Okay, I'm a pretty so, big movie buff. I do not know this oh movie. This is the movie about uh, the brothers who start robbing banks because the uh, the bank company is repossessing their mom's house. Uh, they they caused cancer uh, on like their like basically make their like basically the oil company that that like set up wells in their house, like knew that would cause cancer. So she's, I think she passed on or something. So they're, they're robbing banks. It's a really good movie. I'll have to come back with it later. I'm, I'm upset that I can't remember it now, but. Oh yeah. I remember that. It's um, hell or high water. Hell or high water. Yeah. yeah I, I never saw it, but yeah, I, I know okay. what that is now. Yeah. Watch it. It's, it's great. So really good answers here. And so I wanted to dive into a few of them. Uh, so uh, my guy, Jason DeSouza says steal Cortland Sutton. Robbery, David Montgomery. How are you feeling that? You fading that, feeling that? What are you, where are you going with those? So <laughs> before we get into this quick, just so I understand, since those terms are very similar, we're talking that a steal, he is of value, and the robbery is he's being overvalued. Is that am I yeah. to understand it this yeah. way? The way that I was seeing it is like you're doing the stealing when you're, yeah, okay. I got getting, you. you're getting a good value. Robbery is where kind of like you're getting robbed. You know, like – you're like this guy is why is i can't draft him here you know what i mean so like you you feel uncomfortable drafting him at i got you because you feel like you're getting kind of your value is getting robbed okay i got you that's what i thought too um yeah yeah. yes i absolutely agree that he's a steal at his adp he has got top 10 wide receiver potential um people forget how good he was before he was injured with especially with drew lock passing to him um montgomery uh, no, I don't think he's. I don't think he's being overdrafted. Um, I do think that twenty. So that's pretty. That's pretty late, honestly. Yeah, I think it's fair. Um, it's you know, I I do think that he is not going to be as good as he was last year because of the running backs they have back. So right. if you're drafting him because of twenty twenty Montgomery, yes, I think you're going to be disappointed. But I, I'm I'm fine where he's going. 
Yeah, I don't think uh, David Montgomery is a robbery. Sorry, Jason. Uh, I, the reason I say that is because if he was being drafted as RB10 uh, after finishing as RB4, okay, yeah, okay. He's, it, it's RB like 20. You know, we, yeah. we talked about it with, I talked about that Harmon yesterday. That's not terrible at all. So I like that. I think I'm going to disagree with the robbery part. Um, all right, let's do the next one. Mitch Harden says, steal Mike Williams, robbery, Ryan Fitzpatrick. I'm going to weigh in first on this. Uh, Mike Williams was a steal. Now I saw him go in the seventh round of a best ball tournament. That's not a steal anymore. If you're getting Mike Williams in the eighth round or seventh round, you're paying full price. If you're getting him in the you know uh, ninth, tenth, then he's a steal. So I mean, not even full price. I think I think seventh round is probably where his his highest upside is going to be. So you're paying top dollar right there, and then maybe the the eighth round is is kind of maybe market price week to week. Uh, but yeah, I, I think Mike Williams was a steal, and hopefully in home leagues he still can be. What, what do you think about uh, Ryan Fitzpatrick as a robbery? Uh, I can pull the ADP up here from four for four and look and see where Ryan Fitzpatrick is. I didn't feel like he was ro- being robbed by anybody. Did did you? Feel no. that way? He's not. He's not even in the top. You know what I mean? But I, I want to get your opinion. He's Ryan Fitzpatrick, quarterback twenty-five. Who's he robbing there at no, twenty-five? Yeah. yeah, that's that's basically saying that you're not even drafting him as a backup. Uh, in you know, if you're drafting in a twelve-team league, if you're drafting two quarterbacks, I can't even find him. I'm looking at the um, the the uh. Fantasy Pros expert consensus rankings, and I can't even. Oh, there he is. The QB seventeen there. Um, okay. Okay. No, that's I, I. That's fine. That's fine. I mean, he's he's shown that he puts up numbers. Um, if you're talking about like Scott Fishbowl scoring, where the interceptions that he's going to throw are going to be penalized against him, that's maybe another story. But, but I mean, right. you know, you're you're drafting him at the back end of the backups. I think it's fine to have him there especially with the people he's throwing to like he could be a he could be a streamer in weeks so i'm fine with him yeah and they were talking about uh here in the local uh radio station about how washington's team identity now is more built around speed at the skill positions you know not that logan thomas is a burner but you know you've got uh curtis samuel you've got terry mclaurin you know you've got uh uh is it amari rogers is that is that the guy who's there or is that the guy for green bay that's and green like, bay Okay, who, who there's Deami Br- Brown, Deami Brown, right? Yeah, so you, you, but you have people who are really fast, really fast. So, uh, I, I like, uh, you know, we're, uh, we're thinking, uh, you know, Ryan Fitzpatrick's at as a QB2, you know, really that mid round QB2. I'll take him every day. Uh, so, uh, all right, anyway, second, Tyler says, fantastic movie that give us from, yeah, <laughs> Hell My Water, amazing movie. Uh, Cam, Cam Akers is a robbery at his ADP, which I know right now is RB11. Uh, and, and in that range, Cam uh, and then Brandon Cooks is a steal at his RDP uh, ADP. What do you think uh, about this uh, Cam Akers robbery or are you va- OK with his value right now? No, I 100 percent agree with that. And I'm pulling up my own article that I just wrote for Fantasy Team Advice that uh, he was the cover boy that I have of five fantasy football busts this year at their current ADP. And we had um, um, uh, uh, Jeff Greenwood on with us a Love couple of weeks ago. He echoed this, too. Um, that, uh, you know, I'm just reading some numbers from my own article here that there were seven games last season where Akers had more than 10 touches and his PPR output in those games was 6.1, 6.4, 3.8, 16.4, 21.4, 7.4, 10.6. I mean, those were, you know, he had a couple of flashy games in there, but that's incredibly inconsistent totals for someone who's being drafted as a low end RB1. Um, combine that with the fact that Daryl Henderson is very much still there. Um, mm-hmm. and the fact that Akers is completely uninvolved in the, in the passing game, he had 14 total targets in 2020. I am in no way drafting Cam Akers as his, at his ADP. It's got a fall big time for me to draft him, um, yeah. which I don't think it's going to do because people are all over him. Oh, I see Bo is in agreement with us too. Oh, Bo, um, Bo's, Bo's leading that too. You know, no, like, yeah, I'm. Yeah, we're, we're all the, the sharps that are like in the know. We understand that Cam Akers is an inflation. It's just mm-hmm. an overreaction. Uh, 
I, I, what I wrote, I'm writing an article right now for the Sports Gambling Podcast Network, and I, I pick one overrated player from every team. Easy for the Rams right there. I, I'm doing K-Makers, obviously. And what I wrote is that if you're thinking this is going to be a Todd Gurley situation from, from 2018, let me explain to you that that team gave over 100 targets to running backs that year. Uh, in the last two years combined, the running back position has only gotten 132 targets. So they've changed the way that they distribute the football, and it's not to the running back. Mm-hmm. Not that they don't throw it, but you know that's about 66, 67 targets instead of 100. So that's a shift that you're losing 33% of your value. So if you're going after Cam Akers going, he's going to get me 75 targets. They're not going to give 75 targets to all running backs combined next year. No. So don't do that. That's just a not, it's not good thinking. So I like that he's the cover boy that i just don't want to be associated with people who are you know thinking poorly about this and your your team the fan team advice is so glad i'm with you guys because like <laughs> just gonna suck when he sucks and everyone's like that's ah, my guy ah. <laughs> you know the cam makers truth or so i'm glad we're on the side all right one more and then we're gonna jump uh because you know we gotta go quick get out of here uh, we're just gonna do a, a quick what do we think about aaron Rodgers, and then we'll give some plugs and we'll, we'll jump uh all right right now jordan vanick says curtis samuel steel robbery antonio brown love jordan vanick by the way uh what, what do you think about that i don't know if he's trolling with that brown call or not <laughs> um well jordan- he's climbing he's been climbing at least in in our adp I, I draft with jordan almost every day he used to be a ninth round guy now he's getting pushed into the seventh round so okay um, yeah in in best ball at least he's a bit much honestly okay so for me to all right for me to accurately answer that question i'd kind of need to want to know um talking about antonio brown here what receivers are there when he's being drafted um so i mean i'll talk a little bit if you want to scroll down to that but uh i mean so far throughout this off season i've had him as a steal not a robbery because i think he's going to be a lot closer to Evans and Godwin that pe- than people think. I'm just looking around the the receivers he's with there. Oh, he's got he's with Samuel Cooks uh, Brown. Yeah, I'm still taking him over those guys. Oh yeah, me too. Um, in, in that spot, it gets a little bit a little bit dicey when we get above uh, maybe Curtis Samuel into that Boyd Judy range. I'm not taking him over them. You know, right. if you're talking that he's going in that range, but I, I think he's still a great value. Uh, I got him in Scott Fishbowl in the tenth. <clears throat> um, and then Curtis Samuel as a steal. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I definitely think since he's in that same range, I like both of them as values at their as their at their price tags currently. I don't know about you. Yeah, no, I'm I'm agreeing with you. I think that Jordan's kind of reacting to just our own kind of hive of uh, drafting. Antonio Brown has become more popular, and and when that happens, people fight for him because they know they're not going to get him in the next round. It kind of inflates his value. So I I will take Antonio Brown. Right after, I'll say Tyler Boyd, Antonio Brown are interchangeable for me. I'll have to kind of see where the wind's blowing. But uh, I'm taking Jerry Judy above him, and uh, I'm okay with everybody else. Maybe not DJ Shark. Uh, I'm not a huge DJ Shark guy, but um, we'll, we'll see. I, well, I, I think, yeah, so. But, Bo is saying that Jordan is a pro Brown, so, so maybe he misunderstood the question a little bit there because I, I, that seemed a little odd to me as well. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. We'll have to, we'll have to follow up with, with the boy wonder. Maybe yeah. he'll on, on our show tonight. So, all right, real quick, Aaron Rodgers. I'm just going to say <laughs> I pulled up one article that I saw from, from SI, and, and Matt Ramis, or Matt Ramis, I'm not sure it's Ramis or Ramis, says Aaron Rodgers, since he did not apt out, I would say it's nearly 100% chance he's under center for Green Bay. Is this just blowing smoke up our ass? What do, what do you think? What are his chances of actually being under center? I mean – it, it's so it's so weird. I, I'm I'm thinking now that it's if you asked me this last week or a few days ago, I'd say it was fifty fifty or a little bit more that he won't just because of the words that that he's been saying. But I don't know. I mean, it, it's starting it's starting to lean the way that I think he is is going to be there. I mean, none of us know. Um, it looks like there's a slightly growing sense around the league that he's going to be. Supposedly, he's made a decision. If you look at the articles today, he just hasn't shared that decision. Yeah. Um, and I, I just think that the fact that he's, if that's true, that he's made a decision, that just means he's going to be at training camp, at, you know, in a week. 
Yeah, I kind of agree with you. I hope it is. Uh, Bo on the other side says still 50 50 to play anywhere, zero chance for Green Bay. Man, we'll see, man. I like it. I like the differing of opinions. It means that we get to come back and not prove anybody right or wrong, but just kind of uh, intrigue about what's going to happen. There's Everyone's not thinking the same thing. So uh, I'm into that. That's very cool. Uh, okay. It's certainly so, irritating for drafts. <laughs> oh, yeah, it is. But that's why I drafted in Scott Fish where I did. It's a value or it's I'm shooting mm-hmm. myself you know, in the foot and, and or st- you know whatever. I'm stepping in dog doo-doo, whatever it is. But uh, you know, go big or go home. It's Scott Fish. It's for a charity. Uh, by the way, I have to say um, – uh, this year, super proud of my wife. Yesterday was her birthday. Shout out my wife, Rose. She's an amazing woman. Uh, we had the day before her birthday, we had a mega clean, got the whole house ready to go. Uh, and we had a, the local ABC News 7 uh, came over to our house. They interviewed my wife. They interviewed London all about uh, Hope for Henry and their participation and kind of caring for us during London's leukemia. They're just an amazing organization. So we're awesome. going to... Yeah, tomorrow, as a family, uh, we're each going to use $100 to go to Hope for Henry. And they have a site where you can go to Amazon and directly buy presents for kids. It's going to go right to them. It's their wish list. They go to kids in hospitals with leukemia, with pediatric cancer. They go, what do you want? And they go, I want these five things. And then they buy them for them. And so we're going to be able to participate in that just like people did for us just like people gave to us. So uh, we wanted just to share, you know, that that is the charity that we're doing for Scott Fish this year. Uh, and we're donating to Hope for Henry. We're going to always donate to, to them for all of our causes. Really, uh, we did a 5K for them earlier this year. I ran, I have never run a 5K in my whole freaking fat life. I've been a fat football player my whole life. Never run a 5K. Just woke up on Saturday, ran a 5K. My legs hurt for weeks after that. And uh, <laughs> I made it though. I made it because that's what football nice. players, they wake up and they run the 5K. And uh, but it's all for a great cause. It's all to help kids with pediatric cancer and their families be supported. So do check out Hope for Henry. Uh, and with that being said, uh, also we got to pay some bills here, and we want you to check out some fan team advice content. Jamie's the master of this. He's writing articles all the time. Jamie, what's coming up? What's live right now that people can see over fan team advice? Well, the biggest news right now is our our draft guide, which is up and running and fully operational right now. Um, we've got, it's fully customizable for any league you're doing. Um, and it's constantly updated by us as news comes. So it's, you know, it, it's really that cutting edge thing that we're all doing now. Like, you know, the magazines are great, but the magazines can be outdated in three weeks. Like we're constantly updating that for everything. Um, and, you know, right now it's just going strong with, uh, with, DFS MLB got a lot of new cool tools on the site for that and and PGA our optimizer is still going strong there um <clears throat> and once NFL season starts it'll be DFS 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 all the time we'll have so much content for you with uh for football uh once the time comes for that no I love it excellent and uh you know for myself I'm really excited to announce that uh, I've been brought on uh, by uh, Justin Freeman and Pat Mayo. Uh, you know, oh, I, nice. I, I, it's really cool. I am a content partner over there at Run the Sims. It's a really cool site that allows you to kind of operate uh, with DFS, with fantasy, with wagers, kind of putting together your own uh, simulations, running your own uh, players. And so, uh, you know, you can build your own lineups and it's, it's a really cool tool, a lot of cool tools that are going to be available. So I'm, I'm partnering with them uh, and a lot of other great people are partnering with them as well. You see, you know, Pete Overzet's there as well. So uh, lo- a lot of great things coming up, man, for, for all of us this year, it's going to be amazing. Uh, and then also my guy Bowman big time, you got to go over and check him out. He's a primetime sponsor for us at the, the hot box, hot seat. And we were kind of on it, giving each other a little bit of hard time today, but you can see all the different products. He's got, uh, the taco season. That's fucking hot. We, we've got them all Get that <laughs> bundle right now. He's got apparel over at breeding global speaking of them earlier. So, uh, I think that's it. Anything else, Jamie, anybody else we got to pump up before we go, uh, our show next week. Who, who's coming? I, I, apparently, some you know big guy is going to you know bring that the the guillotine or something. I don't know. He's yeah, we're going to have Paul Charchian on next week. Excellent, excellent guest. He's been on with us before. Um, so knowledgeable, um, so articulate with this stuff, and he's going to be talking about the guillotine leagues, which are super fun, and we'll we'll chop it up with some uh, you know some redraft and dynasty stuff as well. You know what? I would love to be able to get in with some of those leagues this year. So uh, maybe we can talk with him and figure out a way to get some of the fan team advice listeners in a league and just, you know, yep. 
I'm all about building the community and, uh, you know, Paul charging great guy to have on. So Jamie, great pull. Uh, I, I love it, man. Uh, this has been a great show to come back to, and we're going to come back next week and crush it even more. Uh, so thank you to everybody, Brad, Bo, people jumping in, in the chat, you know, we love you. Uh, and, uh, yeah, this is, this is, I mean, this is like the calm before the storm. So like fantasy football is, is like right now, uh, just kind of on the horizon. It's not tangible, but very, very soon uh, it's going to be, oh man, just so, so beautiful. So uh, thank you for joining us. We'll be back next week. And I think I'm going to, I'm going to nail the outro this time. I'm going to, I can do it. I can, you know, um, let's see if I can get it.